Today is the fourth day of Black History Month and I am wanting to feature another African-American architect that I have never heard before I got this book. <laughs> Do you see this book? Do you recognize anything on this book? Right here, this building. This is the National Museum of African-American History and Culture. This is in Washington, DC. This is a part of the Smithsonian Institute, uh, the, all of those Smithsonian museums. And what is amazing is I remember when they started building this one. And I remember in 2016 when this one was opened and they had a whole televised program of the opening of this museum. I didn't get to go to the opening in September because I was teaching in Texas, but I did make my way down there in December of 2016 and my mind was blown. Just taking in this amazing museum. I mean, I had never seen anything like that here on U.S. soil. We had seen something in South Africa when we went to the Apartheid Museum and that was beautiful. And I had been to the Civil Rights Museum in Atlanta, but to see the vision come together for this museum, again, mind blown. It was so amazing that I knew I had to get back. And guess what? I went back a year later in December of 2017 and still captured all of the amazing information and the beauty that lied there inside that museum. Well, I am doing so much talking, talking about the museum, but this book right here, Dream Builder, the story of architect Philip Freelon is about one of the chief architects of this actual museum. And not only did he do this one, but you remember I just told you I went to the uh, civil, I guess it's like the Civil and Human Rights Museum um, in Atlanta. I didn't realize at the time, but he was also the architect of that one. And it is a beautiful museum, it really is. Um, that one focuses on the civil rights movement. When you get to this one, uh, the, National, the National Museum of African American History and Culture, this one goes from when we were kings and queens in Africa, and then moves all the way through slavery, all the way through the reconstruction period, all the way through the civil rights movement, continues, continues to present day, beautiful museum. So they're both great. He designed both of them and wow, I wanted to read this story about him and the process that it took him to even get to designing that museum. And it was a collaboration. It wasn't just him. There were other people that they mentioned in this book that were a part of it, but this book was powerful. This book was inspirational and I hope that you also enjoy. Well, without further ado, let's read. Dream Builder, the story of architect Philip Freeline by Kelly Starling Lyons, illustrated by Laura Freeman. And guess what? There's, there is an afterword in this book by Philip Freeline himself. Dream Builder, the story of architect Philip Freeline. Vision. In Phil Freelon's world, art breathes dreams to life. Everywhere he looks around his Philadelphia home, paintings and drawings greet him from the walls. Phil listens to his parents discuss artists at the dinner table. He watches his big sister splatter canvases with creativity. He plays basketball with his buddies and carries a sketchbook around his neighborhood. Buildings, roses, people passing on the street. Phil sees them all and draws clear and strong. Mm. But at school, what Phil sees is out of focus. Letters on a page don't spring to life as words. His mom, a teacher, tries her best to help him. M. M. M, A, M, A, N. What does it say? She asked. Phil lowers his head and his heart sinks. 
His big brother and sister are great students. His dad is a successful businessman. Why can't he see how to read? Isn't that interesting that that N looks backwards and this A looks upside down? Hmm. Someone in his family shows him a strength he holds inside. His pop-pop, Alan Randall Friedon, is an educator and Harlem Renaissance painter. In his studio, Phil sees pastel homes by harbors, fishermen. Still wet canvases and palettes with oily colors dare him to touch. One day, the two of them walk through the woods. Phil darts this way and that until Pop Pop tells him to sit by his side on a log. Close your eyes and listen, Pop Pop says. Phil hears birds crooning and squirrels scampering across crunchy leaves. He smells the fragrance of earth. He feels the breeze dance across his honey skin. Phil is seeing the world with an artist's inner eye. Foundation. As Phil grows older, his special sight deepens. His thoughts have color, shape, and form. Math and science fill him up like art. Phil can see strings of numbers and formulas in his mind. Reading takes longer to master. His mom and sister recite Shakespeare for fun, but Phil freezes when called to read aloud in class. He struggles to find joy in books until he realizes that words can create images too. In time, those story portraits show him new worlds, just like art. Mm. Do you see this word? A-R-C-H, arc, arch. See this word? F-I-S-H, fish. Ah, these words are coming to life and becoming images. Phil explores different media. He doesn't just draw. He writes essays and poems. He can see the shape of a car inside a block of balsa wood. He builds using his senses to create. When his father gifts him models after business trips, Phil spreads pieces of battleships, cars, and planes out like a puzzle. He doesn't need directions to know where each piece should go. Soon, his paintings, sculptures, and models begin to reflect the times. He carves African masks from bars of ivory soap. Black is beautiful. Say it loud. I'm black and I'm proud. They're not just mottos. Their beliefs that live in him. His father's stories are part of him too. Stories of having to sleep in a different Southern hotel than white, his white colleagues. Stories of being the only black man in airports except for the porters. Stories of being mistaken for an athlete instead of a businessman. In his proud black neighborhood, Phil sees people who never make the news. His neighbors are doctors, suit and tie wearing detectives, teachers, friends learning to play concert piano. Phil hears a chorus around the nation shouting for justice and equality. When his father is at the March on Washington, Phil watches on TV and feels like he's there with his dad, soaking in Dr. King's dream. Frame. At Central High School, Phil signs up for a drafting class. When the teacher asks the students to look at the front of a machine and draw the other three sides, Phil gazes deep inside and can see what's out of view. 
he becomes the top student in his art and drafting classes. He wins industrial design competitions. An idea emerges until it becomes clear as a snapshot. Phil wants to be an architect, someone who designs buildings, a perfect blend of his strengths in art, math, and science. At Hampton University, a historically black college, Phil aces every architecture lesson, tutoring classmates who need help. Later, when he attends North Carolina State University's School of Architecture, he soars too. But he wonders why they never study anything created by people who look like him. On his own, he discovers Black architects who design celebrity homes and a university chapel. He reads about African and Islamic builders his classes left out. He thinks about artists like his pop pop, whose work made unsung people and places seen. One summer, while Phil's still a student, he takes the lead in designing a solar greenhouse in Virginia. As the structure grows and glistens, a dream begins to take shape. Phil wants to make the world better through what he creates. Form. As an architect, Phil turns wishes into buildings with doors and windows, plumbing and lights. By the time he founds his own firm in North Carolina, his mission is clear. He will not design prisons or casinos. Phil creates schools, libraries, bus stations, museums, places that help people, that show everyday beauty, that celebrate heritage and fill hearts with joy. They show us a few of his buildings. So this is the Tinley Friendship Neighborhood Library in Washington, DC. Here is the Durham Station Transportation Center in Durham, North Carolina. Here is the Reginald Lewis Museum of Maryland, African American History and Culture in Baltimore, Maryland. And here is the National Center for Civil and Human Rights in Atlanta, Georgia. Then, one day, Phil hears about a dream imagined decades before he was born. In 1915, 50 years after the end of the Civil War, People dreamed of a national memorial to honor black soldiers and sailors. That dream grew until they could see a museum that would rise like a phoenix on the Washington Mall. A museum to honor black achievement. A museum to show black resilience, strength, and pride. For decades, that dream was deferred. But in 2003, a national commission makes it come true. A museum will be created that documents black history, life, and culture. Phil and architects around the world want to design it. Dream. Years later, the commission chooses Phil and architect Max Bond to create the preliminary master plan. For months, they work together, making a guide to future spaces and exhibits. In 2008, an international competition is announced. The winning team will get to design and build the museum. For this project, Phil and Max need a dream team. They want to include someone whose work is known beyond the United States. Phil and Max meet with David Ajay, an acclaimed British Ghanaian architect. As the men talk, they watch one another's body language. Can they unite? The team clicks. Phil will be lead architect, coordinating all aspects of the complex project. David will be lead designer, coming up with ideas in collaboration with the team. They have just 60 days to plan a dream passed down for generations.
They huddle around tables, talk on phones for hours, send countless emails, and dig deep. They look. They see a structure shaped like a crown worn by African kings. They see ironwork patterns forged by black artisans. They see a porch of welcome. And they listen. They hear the ocean rocking ships of stolen people. They hear footsteps marching for freedom and justice. They hear voices of unsung heroes waiting for their day. In front of the judges for the competition, Phil tells the story of the dream they want to build. He fills Pop Pop, his father and mother, his family with him. His models stand proudly. His word pictures light up the room. Soon, Phil hears the word that makes his heart sing. Yes! Their next mission is to get the museum open before Barack Obama, the first black president, leaves office. In 2016, a century after the dream was born, they deliver. In the contemplative court, Phil reads Dr. King's words. Until justice runs down like water and righteousness like a mighty stream. He closes his eyes and smells the moisture of the falling water, listens to the peaceful sound. The museum rises near where his father once stood as Dr. King shared his dream. Phil thinks of Pop Pop, who taught him to see like an artist. His parents, who encouraged him to create and imagine. He thinks of how every experience led him to this moment. Phil Freelon, the kid artist from Philly, has become a builder of dreams. And that is the end. At the end of the book, they give us an afterword, and this was actually written by Phil Freeline. So I'm going to take a moment to read it. Growing up, I didn't know any architects. I was drawn to the arts, and the talent that I displayed as a child was encouraged and nurtured by my family. When I discovered architecture in high school, I realized that art and creativity could be used to create buildings. Over time, I learned about the achievements of African-American architects, including Julian Abel and Paul Revere Williams. I was inspired. Coming of age during the height of the civil rights movement, I felt compelled to contribute in some way to the struggle for social justice. As my career as an architect evolved, I continually sought opportunities to bring my design skills into alignment with my desires to make positive contributions to my community and beyond. With many developmental steps along the way, these parallel aspirations ultimately led to my role as architect of record for the National Museum of African American History and Culture. My involvement with this amazing project was an honor and a privilege and the pinnacle of my career. The decades-long journey leading up to the museum's opening included significant contributions from countless individuals and organizations. While the architects portrayed in Dream Builder represent the leadership of the design team, it was Lonnie Bunch, the museum's founding director and now the secretary of the Smithsonian Institution, who was the driving force behind the realization of this new national landmark. A special thanks goes out to Kelly Starling Lyons, who conceived of the idea for Dream Builder and wrote the story, and to Laura Freeman for her lovely illustrations. I also want to thank my wife, Nena Freelon, for her love and support over the years. Philip G. Freelon, May 31st, 2019. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's story, Dream Builder the story of architect Philip Freeline, and I hope this inspired you to also do something in this world that makes it a better place. 
Well, until we read again, take care.